both teams are ready to go, so we should have our draft momentarily. Um, Towers of Doom. Love Towers of Doom. Cheese comp. That's what you're looking for here. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It, it would be... Uh, Medivh Stitches is really, really strong here. Um, all right, here we go. Keep in mind, as Mystic mentioned earlier, the bands do show up backwards. So Cynix's bands will appear on the right and White Walker's bands will appear on the left. White Walker's does have first pick, first band here. So this is their band. <laughs> I, that's a good band to show. I would not mind seeing an Artanis band right here. You know those swaps are almost god tier. Um, he, I think in that last game, he only missed like two or three swaps. And they got oh. kills almost every time. So that is the ultimate respect ban right there. White Walkers weren't playing anybody before this, right? So no, they, they were didn't watching, have the probably. opportunity to watch it, yes. Uh, get that uh, extra scouting information. Right? I mean, if you have the ability to watch the game, why would you not watch the game? Like, I, I, I can't come up with a reason why I wouldn't watch the game if I was, you know, hanging out, not playing anybody. Um, meanwhile, Cynix has just got a ban for the map. And it would be interesting to see if they would just ban out, like, just ban a Medivh, right? It doesn't have to be Medivh Stitches, but Medivh Stitches is the most powerful cheese on the map. So, ban the Medivh. Without Medivh, that, that cheese can't happen, right? Yeah. I mean, or do you just ban to the meta, right? That's the decision that Cynix has to make here. Do you ban to the meta, or do you, confident in your meta ability, ban to the map? And they're going to go ahead and ban Thrall, so it looks like... They are going to stick to the meta, which is fine. Um, they're saying if you want to cheese it, bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the problem, right? You only get one pick here, so you can't show the cheese yet. You have to show a pseudo meta pick here, um, or you can be in trouble. Oh man, the Falstad. I was thinking maybe you could pick up the Dahak, but Falstad is also pretty good. Falstad's great. I, I like any any character, any hero with global here makes me happy. Um, so Falstad's good, Brightwing's good, Dahak is good. Um, even ETC post 10, it means you have to use your stage dive for the global, but worthwhile. And and there's a shock, Dahak gets picked by Cynic. I mean, let's be honest. I looked at their drafts from last week. Every draft that I covered, Dahaka was in like nine tenths of them. Nine tenths of them. Um, Dahaka is pretty strong at the moment, right? especially on maps that need like global presence. <laughs> and you know what was in like seven tenths of the other ones? Zarya. So yeah, I'm was... just saying, if you're queuing in to Cynix, maybe you want to take out Nahaka Zarya. Just throwing that out there. Tychus is a good pick. Tychus does really good damage. I actually like, if you're going to go dual tank, I like you picking Tychus instead of banning Tychus. Because yeah, the damage Dahaka, is good. The Dahaka pick really reveals that, hey, we can solo tank with this, but we're probably going to go double tank, so we're going to pick up the Tychus just to just to make sure that our enemies don't have it. Well, not only that, but you're picking up an AA hero that actually does good damage, right? It's not yeah. like before where Tychus wasn't very good, um, unless you were queuing into double tanks. And Rhaegar ETC, so so White Walker's staying on meta. Um, I feel like you could still fit Medivh Stitches into here, but you're not going to have the blow-up potential you need to follow up on that. Um, so let's see, uh, let's see what... Cynix wants to ban here because this is their ban, even though. Yeah, I well, they already have side. a ranged DPS. They already have a healer and tank, so they probably ban like maybe a melee assassin here. So they could ban the Vala, which isn't a melee assassin, but they could ban the Alarak. See, too. I like the Li Ming ban, and I'll tell you why. Li Ming pokes the uh, tribute or the shrines really, really well, and by banning her you give yourself that much more ability to maybe grab that shrine quick enough to trigger the attack. This is true. I'm the only one that that can potentially do it better than Li Ming is a Rainer. Oh, with the zoning Hyperion. Well, no, but his range is so long, right? 
Yeah. And, and yeah, and you're right. And and the uh, and the Hyperion. The Hyperion's always always evil. Hmm. Evil Penguin Bob, the Cynex cheerleader, is back in chat today. <laughs> Cheering as always. And the mouth ban. Okay. Alright, I I Okay. I get it. I mean, they just banned Artanis Malfurion, the two players that were setting up almost every kill in the last game. Um, I'm not sure Malf fits into where they're going with this. I think I would expect Oriole or Brightwing personally um, from Cynix, but we'll see. We'll see what they pick. Oh, Oriole would be so evil. Or Oriole Zarya or something. <laughs> This doesn't even match their last uh, draft on Towers of Doom. I did cast them playing Towers of Doom last week. Um, and this is not that map, so... Or this is not that draft, so we'll see. We'll see what they do here. They're really thinking on this, this pick right here. Much harder than I thought they would be thinking. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Zarya Brightwing. <laughs> it's like I'm sitting in comms with them. <laughs> oh, whoa, what happened? Uh, it looked like someone disconnected. I'm going to go with someone disconnected. Yeah. Yeah, game crash. Okay. I can see that. So, do we new draft, or do we just go through that whole draft again with picking the same things on either side up to that point? So, interestingly, I don't think the rules actually cover that. All right, Evil Penguin Bob, I will refer to you as the mascot going forward. Um, yeah, I don't think, I mean, the picks... I've never seen this happen before. Maybe should be the same. So restart the draft, same picks and bans. Yeah, see, that's yeah. what I was thinking. Um, yeah, that, I mean, that's how I would do it, right? And that's that's what you should do. You've gotten halfway through the draft at that point. You should really stick. <laughs> like when you happened. were writing down all those picks and bans, right? You know oh, exactly yeah, I know exactly what, what order everybody picked everything in. <laughs> <laughs> I, got my little, I got my little notebook of picks and bans. So, yes, I do have it. And now I transfer this into the spreadsheet that I have shared with you, so that you can uh, you can see that stuff as well going forward. Now the real question is, do they all just remember? Yeah, I mean they they should have. It's their picks, right? After all. Right. <laughs> they picked Tychus. It was Tychus. Yep. Yeah, there you go. It's, about it's always it's the bands though. It's it's always the bands that I worry about someone remembering. Um. Right, because the the pick should be easy enough to remember. Yeah. It's a leaming ban. Yep, and then we should have a Malfurion ban. Yep, and then we should have the Zarya Brightwing that I psychically called. <laughs> yep. That's how you know you're casting the same team a lot when you know that much, right? <laughs> That's what I'm going with. <laughs> I love that skin, by the way, that Zarya skin. Ah, yeah, that Zarya skin why. is pretty sick. <laughs> That's probably the best Zarya skin there is. Okay. And now, take two, we are back into draft that I don't know. White Walkers has their last two picks. It's got to be damage, right? I mean, they could go second support here, maybe a Tassadar um, Vala or, uh, or Tassadar Illidan would be nice. Um, the problem is you just don't get a lot of value out of Illidan on this map because you can't go core, right? So the, the Illidan cheese is not really a thing. 
Um, I don't know. I don't. Know. What do you think? Any predictions? Hmm. I mean, I'm thinking maybe they want a mage, so they could pick up KT. I don't know if they'd want to pick up Jaina. But yeah, you're right. They could pick up like more auto attackers, like Vala and stuff. Oh man, that's surprising. I did not see that coming. Okay. Varian does. Varian can do sick, sick damage and crazy things, uh, depending on how good you are with him and how well, uh, how well you you work with your team with him. And I think that was a Master Varian skin. I don't know if I'd want Varian here personally. I'm trying to think of like all the, like all of his builds, right? And so you got the tanking build, which would be okay. I mean, it would support your backline. And then you got the burst build, which would be not that great. I mean, you're trying to burst the Tychus. I mean, you could burst the Brightwing. Bursting Zarya is kind of hard. Bursting Tahaka is also kind of hard. You know what the problem is? Oh, wow. They have shields oh, for shoot, days. Oh, shoot, Medivh. Shields <laughs> for days. So I was going to say the problem with bursting anybody on that other team is they can pop a Zarya shield, right? But let's ignore the Zarya shield for a minute. There's a Zarya shield, a Medivh shield, and Brightwing if Brightwing goes the shield build. Like, what are you going to do? Shield, like, you're not going to kill anybody on that team. And the Leyline Seal, like, hey, guess what? You're not doing anything. So I, I actually I have to say, the, uh, well, what is it? The Twin Blade build actually wouldn't be that bad here. It might work. It might not. We'll have to see. So, on the red team for the White Walkers, we have Claws on Chromie, Top 3 on ETC, Wata on Varian, Asterisk on Rhaegar, and the Zerto on Falstad. And on the other team, we have our favorite Cynex. We have Stu Manchu on Dahaka, Dayuni on Brightwing, Cynex Asusake on Tychus, Grim on Zarya, and Ataro on Medivh. Okay, and we'll see. Um, I give the edge to this in just in the draft to Cynex. Um, I, I'd i say the same thing. I'd say, uh, although the other team do have a Chromie, it could potentially like mix it up a little bit, you know, surprise factor Chromie. It's always possible, right? I mean, that's why you play, to figure out uh, if you're better than the other team or not. I, I love Blizzard's tooltips. If the enemy, level, enemy hits level 20 before you, be careful. Level 20 talents are very powerful. This PSA brought to you by Twitch TV slash Liquid Live. <laughs> My tip says, never surrender. Even if your team is behind, you can win a big fight and start a comeback. I don't know if many people believe that because, you know, when something goes wrong, all I hear in chat is just GG. Right? That's the worst, too. And, like, six minutes in, GG. Like, dude, really? Like, we haven't even lost yet. Especially on Towers of Doom of all maps, right? Towers of Doom is, like... Like, there is, there is no win or lose at six minutes. It's shots on the core. You can always come back on this map. Yeah, Towers of Doom is that really comeback map. Um, so somebody somewhere is struggling to load this game. And I don't know where... Are you loading okay? So Or is it me? Or Nope, there I go. Yeah, I think it's someone on... Uh... Team White Walkers because we did have Cynex load in last game and they were yeah. loading in fine. Uh, it might have been Chromie. Chromie is yeah, the I think first it's Chromie. Behind. All right, there we go. Prepare <coughs> for battle, Excuse heroes. Me. All right, talents are up. Let's see what everybody goes. Stable portal, always a fun one. Combat tactician. Oh, Chromie. Chromie going for sandblast damage. The battle begins in 10 seconds. ETC with block party. That's not my favorite Five, um, talent on ETC. Four, especially three, against the Tychus. That two, block gets eaten one. up like so quick. Or Zarya, right? Right. Like their their AA is almost constant. So you're just I mean, yeah, I understand that a lot of them is AA damage, but you know, it's like really, really fast AA damage. Right. <laughs> so what are you gonna do? 
And Medivh already scouting the whole team, so no one is safe to hide. Whole team's just kind of cycling around, throwing out a little bit of poke damage. Not really doing anything major. Um, Synex did go ahead and clear their minion waves, and it looks like the Hawk is going to go top, and they're going to move into their typical four-man rotation. False is going to be want to yeah want to be careful here. There is a, a Medivh chasing him, and it looks like Dayuni on that bright wing is just kind of sitting mid. Didn't go down for that last uh, that last rotation, and it's just kind of. All right, they're going to split into a one-two-two. It looks like I, I'm not I'm not really a big fan of a four-man rotation on this map. Um, I feel like it's the too lanes big. are too big. Yeah, too far yeah. apart. Zarya Brightwing in, in the middle, though, I, I can kind of see. Um, that, that could be good, and then that leaves Tychus and Medivh kind of bottom. Medivh floating around as he needs to, and Tychus already pushed their mini wave all the way to the uh, wall to do a little bit of damage. My, I don't, I'm not expecting anybody on either team to get a pick early here. Um, we're just going to see him kind of go back and forth, uh, push, push lanes where they can, but keep the lanes clear. Um, we should see the, sh the, uh, altar spawning too. Wow, I was totally going blank on the word altars. I wanted to call it shrines for some reason. So we do have the typical three altar spawn. Um, and it looks like we're going to get a little four man action in the middle. Possibly. Nope. I think with the way that Synex is posturing, they probably going to get the two out of the three here. I, I would agree with that. It looks like they're definitely looking to take the bottom one. The Haka up on the top one. Um, he should get that pretty quick. Varian is moving in on him because ETC is up there. So Varian may be able to stop him. I'm not sure if they're, what they're going to do there. But All right. Oh, and False Staff flying in. I think this may not blow up for two man two. Yeah, yeah, there he goes down. But now you have the rest of Synex arriving uh, after his death and looking to secure their own shrine. Uh, four on four, no five on four, and that's gonna be that might be the end of Dayuni there on the right wing. Yep. But also the end of Rhaegar. So both heroes are dead, and and Synex is not stopping. They yeah, Dahaka respawning. Kill coming back <laughs> saying I want some revenge right and he got it too pretty quickly um, that's the power of the Haka with his burrow he can go from dead to hey guess what I'm going to tongue lash you into submission pretty quickly and we do have Zarya versus Varian in the mid lane right now just kind of clearing waves poking at each other the Haka taking that top camp um, which is a good move for Doc, I feel like. I feel like that now's the right time to do that. Um, ETC taking Crowd Surfer, so he can power slide over some of those walls, surprise the entire enemy team. See, I, I just, I don't know. I've never really liked that talent. That's that's my own personal belief. ETC taking a lot of damage from the Haka Brightwing, though. Is going to be able to power slide away from it. And the Pumpkin Sappers are looking to uh, take out this top wall. Meanwhile, wow, we have a little fight going on the uh, bottom Pumpkin Sappers. <clears throat> Dahaka burrowed down and they uh, turned a two on two into a four on two really quickly. That's the power of globals on this map. All that, them, <laughs> they got that last Sapper. How lucky. <laughs> <laughs> And it looks like top, or mid, I'm sorry, mid, we still have uh, Zarya just kind of doing doing things and keeping the lane at least even, if not pushed out. They did get their seven slightly ahead, so it looks like they're about half a level ahead. I'm um, not enough to really say they're dominating the XP, so. And the bottom shrine is spawning. This is gonna be an interesting fight. If they can, if uh, White Walkers can actually get one more level, they can get Chromie's level 10. Right. Or Heroic, rather, Chromie's not. Sweet. Right, not <laughs> level 10, but her uh, her ultimate ability, or her ultimate ability, yeah. And ETC going deep. 
Yeah. He wanted to kill there, but he is not going to get it. And now they are taking a ton of damage because of that, and they're going to lose Chromie. Rhaegar's low, ETC's low, Varian's really low, and he's going to go down. And uh, it looks like they're going to grab that altar. Brightwing went ahead and stayed behind to grab it, and they're going to get the uh, bottom wall, too. They may even be able to get this bottom uh, fort if they push in on it. Oh, they are pushing in on it. <laughs> they want it. Asusaki taking a little bit of damage but getting shielded pretty quickly. Zarya with almost full energy though. She can do some crazy damage at this point. But they are going to pull back before getting the whole fort now. Varian back up top trying to deal with that Nahaka. And Chromie did go slowing sand, so she does have her, her level 10. Varian getting pretty low, and that's going to cost, does have to tap, but that's going to cost them the whole top wall. Meanwhile, mid, <laughs> it is a three on one, but he might go down. Nope, just kidding. I'll just portal myself out of here. Thanks. ETC holding uh, Brightwing and Zarya at bottom at the moment. Ah, Brightwing, Tychus, and Zarya are going to go ahead and invade the uh, enemy team's camp. ETC has nothing he can do. He goes ahead and backs out. Uh, looks like Chromie's holding mid lane. And Rhaegar and Falstead did go top lane to help Varian with uh, Dahaka, but not enough to really make a difference. So, Cynix is really... They got a nice solid lead. They're a full level ahead. They do have their heroic abilities already. Huh. Interesting though, instead of Leyline, we did go Polybomb. Um, always fun to see that. Oh, that's a dead berry in there. And we're gonna have the two top altars spawn. Dies right before the altars spawn. Although, pretty sure he'll be up by the time uh, the altars actually spawn. So. And while, while we were watching uh, watching Cynix kill uh, very in top, they were able to secure the bottom fort. So they do now have a fort lead. And it looks like they are setting up to grab both of these altars if they can. The altars have risen. Activate them now. Varian finally level 10. And he did pick up the Twin Blades of Fury. So Cynix did get the first, uh, the first oh, altar. Now they're fighting though. for the second one. And it looks like they're going to, yeah, they're definitely going to get a couple of kills here. I think they can pick off this Rhaegar possibly. Um, they're working at it, but I, they might not get it. Uh, Chromie poking from the safety of her uh, her towers and shrines, but I don't know that she's going to be able to keep both people from uh, from doing this, from getting this altar. <laughs> nope, there's the altar. And Chromie's really low and is picked off by Brightwing and Zarya. The power of the oh machine. no, oh, Brightwing! Brightwing. Trapped. <laughs> he is trapped. Uh, that might be a dead dragon. Oh nope, shields, shields, shields. Yeah, and there she goes. I mean, there's only so much you can do, but they lost a Brightwing and they're about to gain a boss. Possibly. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Brightwing complaining of the lag. Um, <clears throat> White Walkers is pushing in, trying to uh, trying to force um, Cynix back, and they do successfully do that. But not enough to really sway the game. They are down level 13 to level 11. So... Uh, Cynix is working with a current advantage, with a real advantage right now. Medivh might have just gotten caught out, but he's Medivh, so he just gets away anyway. I mean, let's be honest. Unless you catch Medivh out and stun him until he's dead, Medivh has a lot of tools to get away. It certainly does. Catching those pesky Medivhs is really hard. <laughs> the Haka did just pick up a lower set of sappers. But the red team did just retake their fort. The grave so it looks like they're going to pick up both sets of sappers, which should get there right about the time that fort finishes respawning. It should allow them to get pretty close to retaking it. Uh, mid lane is mostly just white walkers knocking around the, uh, the minions, but the Haka has come in. We do have a middle altar spawning. And let's see here. That's going to be all six of the sappers, or five of the sap, five of the six, hitting that that fort, getting pretty low. Well, that was a nice cleanse by Rhaegar.
And White Walkers are just thinking, man, we just got this fort back and now it's paint and it's all scratched. It has, right. it has a couple of dents in it from, you know, all these sappers. But look at that. I mean, they're, they are... Cynix is trying to grab this uh, altar as soon as they can, but White Walkers is pushing in and trying to challenge it. And this is the time. It's 13 versus 14. At least they're on the uh, same uh, talent tier. And they might get a kill here, but it looks like Varian's really low. And... Oh, they did. They uh, they lost two heroes there. Falstad did use his gust to try and disengage, but it wasn't enough. Yeah, White Walkers engaged right into Senex, and the death ball team comp that is Senex is just too strong. Right. And what I like here is instead of taking the altar right away, they're going to go ahead and take this tower back for the extra tower shot. Now they can take the altar, they can get an extra shot on the core, um, and instead of uh, five shots, it'll be six. Sorry, instead of four shots, it'll be five. I can't, I can't math today. Um, and it does look like Cynix is going to go ahead and try and pick up all the sappers and then escort them in. Um, or at least they're posturing up to do so. I don't know that they're going to do it in time, though. It looks like most of White Walkers is here trying to take back this fort. Um, but they are getting in, and they are mixing Heroes. it up a little. Uh, the problem right now for White Walkers is they're split. They have two right on the tower, and then they have three up at the camp trying to take the camp. So these three sappers may actually get through, depending on how hard uh, Senex pushes to get them in. And since the hawk it can be there in an instant, but it looks like the hawk is trying to get that top fort. Don't know that they're gonna get in with this. Nope, those sappers are not gonna make it. Oh man. Oh oh wow, they actually killed killed that sapper before it was used to kill yeah. the fort. But they take the fort back anyway. They didn't get so. the fort back, but in the meantime the Hawk took the top fort. So total fort points has not changed for uh Cynex. The Haka just roaming around and doing the Haka things as we expect him to do. So, uh, looks like White Walkers is going to try and take back uh, their top shrine, or their top uh, fort rather. Um, in the meantime, <laughs> Cynix is bottom, and they're like, "Well, you took you took this back, and we liked it, so we're going to go ahead and take it back." Um, so it should be another fort for fort swap. This does look like White Walkers is going to get top. Yep, there it goes. And Cynix is going to get bottom, and now we're on a free altar spawn. So it's important that nobody dies early here, and Dahaka is maybe not in the best spot for that. Varian wants some action. But nobody's there with Varian to follow up, so he's not going to get anything out of that. ETC is going to go ahead and grab their top altar for uh, White Walkers. Oh, that was and a pretty good expulsion was, zone. I like that expulsion zone. That cross varying is like an ETC diving on nobody into the back line. He is not where he wants oh, to be. Shit. That's going to cost him his life. Um, yeah. Meanwhile, Cynics did pick up the bottom altar, and now they're picking up the their altar, which is going to leave... <laughs> and they're picking up the boss. This should be game. Um... There is no way for White Walkers to really challenge them at this point. And yeah, that's going to uh, be boss, and that's going to be game. game. Game plus one attack on the core. So, um, I think I think that was all draft. That was, I mean, all right, let's 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 be fair. Cynix plays a great game, right? Like, I, I'm not going to not gonna lie about that. Cynix plays a really great game. Um, I enjoy casting them, but I want to I don't want to downplay how much of the draft that that really hurt uh, Hurt White Walkers Yeah, indeed they they didn't go for the cheese they uh, they picked a lot of meta picks, but uh, I'm questioning the like the chromie is not bad on this map just because she can stop the altars and whatnot right the Varian, the Varian is okay, but it's not the best pick they could have picked. 